All right, welcome everyone. So for our next tutorial, we have Fraser Tweedale, who's a free IPA developer and PKI guy. Please welcome him. Well, thank you everyone for coming along to the workshop. Uh, well, let's get started. So um, the workshop goals, you're gonna learn what is identity management, and just as a high level concept, uh, I want you to, to understand the high level architecture of free IPA, what the major components are, how they fit together, what jo jobs uh, do they do, and you're gonna get some hands on experience uh, and hopefully become fairly comfortable with deploying free IPA, enrolling machines, uh, managing users and services uh, and access policies, and uh, using IPA's authentication systems for um, authentication and authorization with a web application. Uh, so the outline of the workshop, I'm just going to run through this slide deck um, to give you this brief introduction. Uh, you are going to set up your Vagrant uh, and VirtualBox environment, hopefully you've already done that, and you're ready to just Vagrant up and uh, start working through the curriculum. And the curriculum itself uh, involves installing an IPA server on one VM, enrolling a, another VM as a client machine, uh, then performing some user management, um, setting up host-based access control policies, and then the uh, web app authentication and authorization exercises, uh, which will be from uh, the client machine using the server's facilities. Um, there's also a replica installation module. Uh, if you think that that would be beneficial, feel free to do that before uh, you do the host space access control or the web app authentication module. Uh, and there's also some certificate management um, content. So uh, what's identity management? Um, so the motivations for it are security, so you want to avoid password fatigue with users, you don't want identity silos where users have to remember you know, half a dozen different passwords because if they do, they're gonna choose really bad ones and poor security. Uh, implementing password policies, uh, access policies, and of course a secure authentication system. And also the productivity benefits. So in avoiding identity silos, you avoid the repetitive administration actions, avoid the repetition of having to log in with, um, by using a single sign-on system. Um, you can avoid downtime and simplifying the administration um, improves the productivity within your organization or your open source project. So uh, what are identities? Identities are things like users, services, hosts and groups, uh, host groups. Um, basically the entities um, or conceptual entities uh, within your organization's IT infrastructure. Uh, authentication, so these are things like passwords, um, two-factor authentication um, with your um, you know, HOTP or TOTP or some other token-based system. Uh, single sign-on system, which is more than just having um, a single password that you can use to log into every site. Um, so you know, doing an LDAP bind, for example, uh, from all these different places. No, it's more than that. It's actually uh, logging in once, and then you are logged into the services um, to which you have access. All you need to do is navigate there, and you should have access, uh, or to talk to those servers, and um, the existing tokens or tickets that you have give you access. Uh, authorization, so these are identity-related policies about who can and can't um, do what in your systems. So. Having established who you are, now we can solve policies to say, can you do what you're attempting to do? And finally, management. So how do we actually manage the identities, um, the authentication, and then the authorization policies at, at scale within an organization? Some of the technologies in this space, um, LDAP, uh, who's familiar with LDAP? I expect many of you are, yep, most, good. Um, Kerberos, um, who's familiar with Kerberos, who uses Kerberos? Okay, who's ever deployed Kerberos? Yeah, a few people, okay, good. Um, you'll be deploying Kerberos today. Um, so hopefully you'll, most of you will find that a, an, an interesting exercise. Uh, X509, which is a public key infrastructure, so this is the PKI that secures um, the web, so you wouldn't know um, SSL or TLS uses X509 certificates, so free IPA includes a, a X509 PKI, 
um, that you can either chain to an existing public key infrastructure or deploy with your own root certificate and use a parallel PKI uh, within your organization to uh, identify uh, users and services. Um, DNS, of course, making sure um, that you can actually access hosts by name rather than by IP address. Um, and uh, DNSSEC is also supported by Free IPA. And NFS, uh, which you can use to auto mount home directories um, so that when users log into um, hosts on your network, they have access to the same home dir everywhere or same shared resources uh, on different hosts. Uh, we won't be setting up any NFS today. So Free IPA uh, is an identity management solution. Uh, it brings together a number of components that are in themselves their own separate open source projects. Um, the main components are 389 directory server, which is the main um, LDAP uh, directory store. MIT Kerberos um, K, uh, KDC, which is a key distribution center. The dog tag certificate system. Um, this all sits behind uh, an Apache HTTPD. And uh, we also use bind for DNS. And there's a client agent uh, which runs on the server and on client machines called SSSD, which stands for System Security Services Daemon. So uh, at a high level, so I'll just grab my um, laser pointer. So the high level architecture of free IPA uh, all of this over here is the free IPA server, um, or you know, conceptually representing possibly a cluster of free IPA servers, um, which contains the LDAP directory and uh, all of these other services, PKI, um, the Kerberos um, KDC, the bind DNS, um, all talking back to the LDAP directory store. So that's where all of the actual data lives. Um, you can administrate the free IPA server using the web interface, uh, or a command line interface, which actually talks um, JSON RPC um, to the IPA framework, which is running on an Apache or behind an Apache on the free IPA server. Um, your clients uh, enroll in the free IPA domain. Most of the clients, um, Linux, FreeBSD, uh, support SSSD. For those that don't, um, there's the slappiness plugin that um, maps to um, various LDAP schemas that just traditional LDAP um, clients will use to look up users, groups, and so forth, and uh, perform binds. Uh, we also support trusts with Active Directory, but we won't be doing uh, anything with that today. The uh, architecture of SSSD uh, is such that it provides a NSS, uh, it's a name server switch responder and also a PAM, Pluggable Authentication Modules Responder. Um, this is everything on the left-hand side of the network boundary. This is all on one host. So these clients are actually programs um, that talk to the NSS responder or the PAM responder, um, whichever you know, is relevant to the operation that the client is performing um, through a shared library. NSS responder and the PAM responder work through a cache to the domain provider, which can support multiple identity or authentication providers, but um, the way we'll be configuring the client today, um, the identity server and the authentication server are both free IPA and it's only configured to talk to free IPA. You can configure SSSD to talk to both free IPA and Active Directory, for example, uh, but we won't be doing that in the workshop today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it just talks LDAP, um, but for free IPA servers and for Active Directory servers, um, it has some additional smarts to know, for example, for free IPA, um, where to find the host space access control rules so it can provide uh, HBAC enforcement on a client and that sort of thing. So um, talking LDAP, but um, knows about identity provider specific schema depending on the provider. Yep. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I yep. I just wondering if there was some other protocol that they chose to use that should be that. No, nope. LDAP. So, yeah. uh, so Kerberos Basics, um, when you <coughs> perform a K init on a host, 
uh, your client authenticates to the authentication service and receives a ticket granting ticket with an expiry. When the client wants to talk to a particular service, it then requests a service ticket and it, uh, from the ticket granting service and it either presents the TGT as authentication or in the original and bare um, Kerberos protocol, in fact, it doesn't need to do that. It just um, requests the service ticket and can use the TGT to decrypt the service ticket. Um, and then the client uses the service ticket to authenticate itself to the application. Um, typically, the authentication service and the ticket granting service are actually the same piece of software. Um, this is usually called the KDC, the Key Distribution Center. So Free IPA provides the KDC. Um, so it's uh, workshop time. For anyone who has not already set up their Vagrant environment, ready to Vagrant up uh, and begin the curriculum, I have two USB sticks, one of which is already handed out. Um, so we can just pass these around and uh, you can pull the Vagrant boxes off the images to avoid having to download 500 meg images uh, over the conference Wi-Fi. Yes? Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, maybe you didn't copy properly. Um, yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll work that out in a minute. I might need to just put the things back on the USB sticks. Uh, so the workshop curriculum itself uh, is at this uh, GitHub repo, so github.com slash freeipa slash freeipa-workshop. Um, if you haven't cloned the repo, clone the repo. That's where the Vagrant file lives. Um, and the uh, RST, which is the curriculum, which you can look at either on the web or just read locally on your machine um, after you've cloned the repo. Uh, there's a number of modules. So first module is obviously to install the server. Module two, enrolling the client machine. Uh, module three and four is user management and host-based access control. Uh, five and six is dealing with the web application, so configuring the web application um, to do Kerberos authentication, enforce host-based access control, uh, and pull in additional user attributes from the directory via SSSD, and also certificate management, so acquiring a, uh, an HTTPS uh, or an X509 certificate for the service and uh, setting that up. So modules five and six more or less go together. Uh, module seven is quite separate. So again, if the replica installation um, given the limited time is something that you feel is more important to you in your role, um, please do module seven instead of five and six or before five and six. Um, so I'm here to, to help. Um, lots of people here in the room doing the workshop. I'm really thrilled with the, uh, with the good turnout for this. So yeah, help each other out, um, ask around, work together um, in the spirit of open source collaboration. I'm here to answer your questions and to help you out as well. So uh, let's begin the workshop, and I hope you enjoy it. OK, anyone need the USB stick? Okay, hey everyone. Um, I'm actually gonna start working through some of the curriculum, so if you've been having um, difficulty getting up and running, um, or you just wanna kind of consolidate uh, what you've already been through so far, I'm just gonna run through the, um, the first module, installing the server, um, and then I'll be around helping you again, and I'll, I'll just try and work through the curriculum kind of a little bit behind, hopefully, where people are up to. So I've just run the Vagrant up. Can, it, can everyone read this OK? Can anyone not read it OK? No? OK, good. It is embiggened enough. Um, so I've done the Vagrant up. Now I'm just going to uh, SSH to the server. Now I'm going to do sudo uh, IPA server install uh, no host DNS make home. Okay, so we do want to configure the integrated DNS um, for the server host name uh, and the domain name and the realm name. We can accept the auto-detected defaults. 
going to enter a directory manager password and an IPA uh, administrator password. Now, um, a question that I get frequently, and it's a good question, what is the difference between the directory manager password and the IPA admin password? <coughs> the IPA admin password is the uh, like kind of the root administrator user um, in your domain, so they exist in the directory tree alongside whichever other users you add to your organization. The directory manager password is kind of more like your MySQL root user password, so it's the, basically the root password for your directory server. So those are the difference between the DM password and the admin password. Uh, we won't configure a DNS forward, but we will configure the reverse zone, and we will begin to configure the system. And this whole process takes you know, four or five minutes. Uh, and at the completion of this process, the IPA server will be up and running. Uh, and you can k-init admin to get your admin Kerberos ticket and start adding users and, and uh, whatnot. You can also begin at that point to enroll client machines uh, in the domain, and that will be the next step in module two. So um, I'll just leave it there, since this takes a couple of minutes. Uh, anyone have any questions at this point? Yeah, no problem. So the directory manager password uh, is the password for an administrative user within the 389 directory server software itself. So uh, an analogy to draw would be like your MySQL root account, where you can manage all of your, um, all of your tables and accounts within MySQL. Uh, the admin uh, user account and the associated password is for the administrative user within the IPA domain. So that admin user will live alongside, for example, you know, when we'll see in, the, in a couple of modules time, we're going to define users Alice and Bob, and these are going to be users you know, within our organization. Well, the admin user exists within that directory structure as well, but it is a privileged account. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yep, great, thanks. Yes, the admin is a domain administrator. Okay, anyone need assistance? And I'll um, come along and help. Care for people who are here. So, hey everyone. Um, so just a quick note, um, because there are some people who have already finished up and have blasted through the curriculum, and that's great. Um, please leave feedback uh, about the workshop. So this form, it will only take you a minute to fill out, basically just asks, uh, what's your technical background? How much did you know about identity management before the workshop? Um, you know, how comfortable do you feel with uh, free IPA or recommending free IPA now? And then just some, some specific stuff about what went well, what didn't go well, what did we not cover that you might have liked to have covered that sort of thing? So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this up. Um, if you could please give workshop now or you know, shortly after the conference, that would be very much appreciated. OK, so uh, I'm just going to move on to um, push through another module. So we'll do the client install. So we'll do a vagrant SSH client. And on the client, if we have a look at uh, result.conf, we'll see it's actually pointing to the IP address of the IPA server. So it's already set up to use the IPA server that we deployed for DNS. Um, by the way, I'll, first let's observe that the IPA server install that I left running did actually complete. So on the client, we can run sudo ipa server install, uh, no, ipa client install, um, double dash make home dir, so that when a user logs in for the first time, it will create the home dir on this machine. In production, you would probably want to consider using an NFS auto mount um, rather than making home dirs on the machine. But that depends on your production needs. Uh, it's uh, automatically detected most of the information it needs. 
Uh, so we're just going to accept that information. Got to sync the clock, um, which is a requirement of the Kerberos protocol, that the clocks be within a certain allowable skew. And hopefully this will take not too long. And here we enter a user authorized to enroll computers, which at this stage is just admin and admin's password. So you can see it's issued, uh, I've pulled in the CA certificate um, for the internal CA, configuring SS, um, SSSD on this host, um, and public keys, etc., set up and added to the directory, and basically that's it. This, um, client is enrolled. So now we can do a k init admin and that all just works. So I think that was basically the entirety of, of module two. Yep, so let's add some users then. So we can do now a uh, IPA um, user add Alice, first name Alice, last name Abel and double dash password, which will prompt me for Alice's um, initial password. Alice is a sysadmin and a very good one at that, so we'll add her to the sysadmin group. IPA group add uh, sysadmin. And then IPA group add member sysadmin user Alice. And we can see number of members added one. Now we can do a K in at Alice, and uh, it's going to ask the password. Uh, an immutable uh, policy in free IPA is that whenever a user logs in or K in its for the first time, they have to enter a new password. So that's why we're seeing um, on this initial K in it for Alice, it's asked for the password, and then it said password expired. So now I, as Alice, shall enter a new password. Okay. And uh, what else do we do here? Anyone have any questions uh, about the client enrollment or the uh, kind of user and group administration processes that were just carried out? pretty straightforward. Cool. Where are people up to, can I ask? Has anyone finished? Who's finished the, the workshop? No. Is anyone totally lost and needs help? Sorry? In module four, okay, yeah. Now, there's something about, um, that reminds me. Um, which is module five? Module five, ah, oh, okay, so. In module five, uh, after the mod lookup identity configuration, right here with the sudo dbus send, where we're going to directly hit the SSSD API and try and pull Alice's information across, is that where you're having the problem? Yep, okay. So um, one thing that you may need to do here uh, is to run this command, sudo sss underscore cache dash e, which will just dump the entire sssd cache. So if Alice's information has been read by sssd for whatever reason before you've gone and um, and reconfigured it to pull in the additional info, you may have a stale cache entry. If you dump the cache, it'll forcibly reload it from LDAP and you should get the info. Did that fix the problem? Brilliant. Okay, great. Yep. Okay, um, so we, we are almost out of time. So it is time for some closing remarks. Um, I hope that you've all enjoyed the workshop and learned something. Um, if you haven't finished the workshop, I encourage you please
continue to work through the curriculum if you wish. Um, and uh, for more assistance or other resources related to free IPA, uh, we have, I'll just get my thing me, well, anyway, the main website, uh, freeipa.org. Uh, we have a public demo, which is running the latest version of free IPA, free IPA 4.3. The version of free IPA in the vagrant images you use today is free IPA 4.2. Uh, so there are a few new features and a few improvements in the latest version. Uh, the mailing list is freeipausers at redhat.com. Uh, on Freenode, IRC, just hash freeipa, um, as you would probably have guessed without me telling you anyway. Uh, for help on Stack Exchange, you probably want to go to Server Fault, um, which is for the you know, professional server administration things. Um, if you are asking a development question, like I want to use the free uh, IPA um, Python API or something like that, then Stack Overflow is where you want to go for that. The uh, tags, uh, free IPA and SSSD on both of those sites. Uh, and there's a troubleshooting page on the free IPA wiki as well. Uh, the diagrams from the earlier talk, uh, I didn't draw them because I really suck at diagrams. Um, so that's by some of my colleagues, Dimitri and Martin. Uh, and yeah, the workshop presentation, CC BY. Uh, and again, the feedback link. Uh, so I thank everyone for coming along to the workshop. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm, I'm around for the rest of the conference. Please come and see me and ask questions. And, talk about IPA and you know, how we can solve identity management problems that you have in your open source projects uh, or your organizations. So thank you very much.